You're listening to Cards to the Moon, a podcast about trading cards from both a collector and investor perspective. We hope you'll stick around for the ride as we take a deep dive into the state of the hobby, share some hot takes, hopefully some useful advice and fun stories along the way. Hey guys, welcome back to Cards to the Moon. My name is Clark from 5 Card Guys on Instagram and 5cardguys.com. With me co-hosting as usual is Hyung of Integrity Sports Cards. John is off this week, but joining us for this Friday episode, episode 123, is our friend Chris Begg, who recently coached the Canadian Junior National Baseball team with Hyung late last year. And Chris also has plenty of experience as a pitcher himself, notably competing in the 2004 and 2008 Summer Olympics for Team Canada, as well as the 2006 and 2009 World Baseball Classic. Chris, great to have you join us today. Yeah, thanks. I'm excited to get to talk about cards and baseball. What could be better? (laughs) Nothing can be better than that. (laughs) Uh, Well, I know the World Baseball Classic just ended, but Chris, Just curious, what did you think about the tournament this year and how has it changed since you competed um, almost 20 years ago now? Yeah, um, I think, uh, I guess I have a unique perspective, especially being in the very first one and and it was Mm. uh, brand new. Um, Nobody knew what to expect. Nobody knew the draw that it would would have in fans. And, uh, you know, in the end of it, I think it was pretty successful. But when we fast forward to this year, I mean, I think it was, undoubtedly the the most exciting one that we've seen so far it was Mm -hmm. incredible i mean i will never watch a you know pick to an italy and whoever game over in taiwan (laughs) at seven in the morning but i'm sitting there locked in to these games like it's it was insane right you start learning all these players and watching all these players and seeing some of telling you like you know you look at the rosters beforehand and they're a bunch of you know so to speak, no neighbors, nobody we've ever heard of over sure. here. And then all of a sudden you watch me like, these guys are all throwing like 94 miles an hour on the, on the bump. And like, <laughs> right. why are these guys not playing in the States? And so it's, uh, it was pretty incredible watching. I was locked in. I was, it was so exciting. I thought it was great. Yeah, we loved it. We talked about it in a previous podcast as well, how exciting it was. Um, is it like hockey, you know, where the rest of the world catches up eventually? Um, you know, over that time, do you see like different countries getting better progressively over the years yeah I, I mean i think we have and i i think we hope that it does continue in that trend i mean one of the reasons right. that you know years ago you know gets taken out of the olympics every now and then um the argument was that it's not a global game and i don't think you can argue that anymore you know that's yeah. it's it's worldwide it's in in europe and africa and and oceania and um you know obviously sure. asia north america south america so i mean i don't think that argument has a leg to stand on anymore so um you know i hope it's going to be in the olympics for years to come and not come out and the wbc uh, creates the the draw and interest that it did this year and you know social media was blowing up the whole tournament i mean that was all it was um so, uh, you know, I think uh, it's incredible and I think it just did such a, a great thing for the sport as a whole. Yeah, totally agree. And uh, yeah, really appreciate your insight there. Um, I should also mention you're also a big card collector as well. So before we start this episode, do you want to share what you told us before about working at a card shop back in the day? Yeah, back way back in the day. So it's funny. The one thing I didn't tell you about, like how I first got into it, though, um, I don't know if you guys remember the old Olco gas stations. Oh, yeah. And Olco used to hand out stacks of 1988 Tops cards. And ever, oh, I remember, wow. you know, driving by and I just asked my dad to fill up gas all the time. Right? <laughs> and I, just wanted, I just wanted the cards. So I got stacks of these 1988 Tops cards, not knowing anything, but looking at the back of it and memorizing all the stats. I remember like one of them, I think it was, it was either an 88 or an 89 card, Bob Dernier or Bob Dernier, if you throw the French accent on it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I looked at it, it was, the guy hit 750 one year. I thought that was incredible, but he only had four bats, right? So it's like, <laughs> this, this guy's a Hall of Famer. So, you know, it, it, that's that's kind of what got me into it. But then, yeah, uh, it wasn't too much uh, after that that my brother and I opened up a card store and I was in the basement. My mom had a a retail store of gift baskets and in the basement of the store um we opened up a card shop 
and nice. it was called the card seller you know c-e-l not uh s-e-l and yeah, uh yeah. so that's what we did we you know it was in the, the peak of the, the junk wax and everything when there were right. you know 45 million of every card printed off and everything <laughs> yeah. was over but it was the best you know it was it was amazing and uh you know i'd remember i'd be running the shop by myself um you know i would have been you know, 10, 11, 12 years old running that wow. store by myself. <laughs> you know, my mom's upstairs, but I'm, I'm running it by myself and, you know, right. selling cards and everything. And, and my brother would, would pay me. He's four years older than I am. He'd, he'd pay me in product. So I was like, this is, <laughs> oh, I, get, I get the wholesale prices. I get, <laughs> I'm going to spend my money on cards anyway. So I might as well just take packs of 92 upper deck all day long. So this is great. Right? So that was, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was kind of my story getting into it. And it was just nice. such a great hobby back in the day, right? As a kid, that's what you, that's what you did. Yeah, yeah. I love that story. Amazing yeah. story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're the perfect guest host to have on. That's that's the reason why we wanted you on, um, in addition to um, all your other accomplishments. All right, so for today's episode, we'll be talking mostly baseball and baseball cards. Uh, just because it is opening day, the day we're recording is opening day, the best day of the year, right? Um, and the big thing that everyone seems to be talking about in baseball, of course, is how will all the rule changes affect the game this year? You know, if you don't know what we're talking about, you're probably not a big baseball fan, but all these rule <laughs> changes are to hopefully entice new fans to the game. All right. So just quickly, the three big ones are, of course, the pitch clock where pitchers will now have 15 to 20 seconds to throw a pitch, uh, which will or should definitely speed up the game Two, the bases themselves are bigger, which the league hopes to encourage more teams to steal bases. And three, there's a ban on shifts, which means none of the four infielders can play shallow outfield and two infielders have to be on either side of second base when the pitch is delivered, which will prevent easy outs for, um, you know, pure pull hitting batters. Um, so all that said, do you guys think this will actually help get more people interested in watching professional baseball? And in turn, from a hobby perspective, do you think that will translate into more interest in baseball cards? What do you think, Hyung? I think, Will, will that get back into Olympic sport? <laughs> you know, the speed mm. of the game. That's what they wanted, right? right? And, you know, overall, I think, I think it's good for, for the game. I was a purist before, like, you know, me and Beggar go way back. Like, it, it's all about old school baseball. You know, that's what we love, right? So yeah, we're, we're all about like speeding up the game now. It, it entertains, you know, the fans a lot more. Um, yeah, and coming from a baseball purist, I think it's just, uh, you know, at first it was more of a, like, I'm, I'm not so sure, but I think overall they're marketing to a, like a bigger audience and, you know, it's, mm. it's going to definitely help, I think, in general in the baseball scene. So I'm all for it. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Chris? I'm, uh, I think I'm more of a purist than young here. So I'm, I'm, I actually, <laughs> overall, I hate yeah. it. I hate it. So the big one is the, the pitch clock. I hate the pitch clock. Um, I actually don't mind the bases if it's promoting running because I think that's really exciting. Yeah. The running, the running aspect, and and you know it's you know four seconds of um, anxious entertainment, uh, you know action. So I, mm. I actually like that if it's going to promote stealing. Uh, the shift I don't mind either. Just to get get back a little bit to how the game is you know supposed to be played and not. Uh, not the data analysis and everything about where guys trend and everything. It just, you know, I think we'll see more athletic plays, more um, highlight reel plays and everything like that. But yeah, so I don't mind that one, but the pitch clock, I, I hate the pitch clock. You know, if the whole, um, the whole intent is to speed up the game to get more viewers, I think we're catering to a casual viewer who you're not going to get somebody excited about a two and a half hour game. If they're not excited about a three hour game. You know, it's, it's not going to do the trick. So um, I don't like it. I don't like the pitch clock, but, um, you know, I guess it's to be seen in the future. I know the results of it and everything, but um, no, I, I'd get rid of that one if that were me. The other ones I'm good with. Okay. And I, I think adaptation, like as like these new ideas come, we're, we're always like, oh, you know, we don't like it at first. And then as, you know, it develops, you realize, you know what, it does trim up the time that's that's why i say normally i'm on i'm on the side like with beggar like i'm i'm all about you know keep the game the way it is like even the robot umps but then 
you know, because as a baseball purist, you're always like, you know, that's what baseball is all about. The umpires are part of the game. Like all this is part of the game. But, you know, that's I think that's the evolution of baseball. You know, five years down the road, we're going to look back and we're gonna be like, man, it, it was so slow paced. Right. If, if you think about it. And it totally changes strategies now uh, mm-hmm. of the game. So I think, you know, right now with with all this going on, I would have normally said, you know, dump it all. But the the way everything is going in terms of even like uh, you watched the World Baseball Classic. It was it, going back to how like uh, crazy that was as a as a fan, you know, mm. and we only have that access because we have the Internet now. You know what I yeah. mean? So it's like we didn't have this access before where, you know, we could literally watch every single game, you know, and stream the whole, uh, you know, WBC. So for me, it's it's all about growing the game. And I think in this digital world, you know, our attention spans obviously a lot slower than, you know, what, what they were in the past. And we want uh, more thrill in the sport. So like I'm still – both ways when I coach it's gonna be it's gonna be you know old school but you know as a as a fan I'm I'm not disliking it I think that's part of the reason like we said you know what if this is the the segue into back to Olympic sport if that's kind of like the you know the Mm. the deciding factor we'll say sure yeah that that would be great um you know, I'm waiting to see how creative some of these pitchers and players get to to manipulate that the the pitch clock and everything. Saw so one today actually. We had the Yankees game on, and Garrett Cole was throwing, and he was going to get called for a violation, so he just called the catcher out, called time, called the catcher out. It counts as a visit for the catcher, mm. but he doesn't get charged with throwing a ball, right? So right. just something like that a little bit. And they're going to be they're going to be things. You know, I I I've thought of oh, a couple sure. that I haven't seen happen yet, and. Uh, there you was know, a, like, the Acuna stealing too. Do you guys see that? No, so so no basically, one. lefty lefty pitcher on the mound. He picks off twice, cause, and then now he has to deliver a pitch. So Acuna is out there like huge lead. He steals <laughs> yeah. the bag so easy. This guy might steal sixty bags. Yeah, I mean you 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 can pick over a third time, right? But if you, you don't, you got to get him get out. Him, yeah, if you don't, then right. it's a balk, and he gets the base. Right. So that's why. Like I I don't necessarily hate that. Just because it does promote running, and I think that is such an an exciting part of the game. You know, I'd love to see you know mm-hmm. back in like the eighties when you see guys with whatever 50, 60, 70, 80 stolen bases. And you know, Ricky Henderson's an anomaly, but you know those big numbers. That's exciting. You know, that's exciting for fans. If you like, don't yeah, give me the sure. pitch clock. Give me just give me running. <laughs> give me speed. That's exciting. <laughs> no, I, well, you know what, like. I guess from a fan perspective, I haven't played um, at the pro level like you guys. So this is like purely from a fan perspective. I I love all the changes. Sorry, Chris. I love the pitch clock. I love it. I love it. You know, I, but you know what? I'll say this. As a, as a baseball viewer, like at home watching it, I love it, right? But when I'm at the stadium, I, I'm going to feel rushed. Like I usually love going to the concession stands, taking my time, enjoying the atmosphere. Now I'm going to miss like three innings if I take too long. You know what I mean? Well, like- <laughs> that's a that's a whole different aspect is the concessions. I thought this is, this is probably going off the deep end a little bit here, but I mean, I don't know how the concessions all work with who makes the revenue, whether if it's the stadium, the team, or if it's oh, outsourced. Yeah, yeah. That's right. like, but I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they don't make as much money in two and a half hours as they do in three hours. And they're not going to end up, you know, footing the bill for that and losing revenue. So they're just going to end up char- like charging more for their hot dogs and beer or whatever it is. And that's going to come back on the fans. So now the fans are paying more for that same product that is shorter. So That's a good point. Well, you know, that's something I thought about how it's going to steamroll a little bit. And now, I mean, going to a game or whatever is already so expensive. You're, you know, you could be $500 for a family of four. And now it's just going to be a little bit more. So, you know, all those things are going to add up a little bit, I think. Or... Uh, while you're talking you know like it might be like football you know like they have the tailgating parties before the game you know like if it's two and a half hours you got one hour of just like partying before the game and you got more people coming to the game if this is you know if this works the way it's supposed to getting more fans and more viewers to come to the ballpark you know it's gonna be a it's gonna be great so i i was a casual (laughs) football fan and i've gone to two bills games in my life when i was in college okay and we we tailgated at seven in the morning we were the first ones in the parking lot did that twice 
I be, I became a fan. That, 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 got me, <laughs> yeah, right, that got me into it. It wasn't shortening the game; it was actually lengthening yeah. the whole entertainment day, right? So that was uh, that was fun. So I'm saying, I, I don't know if you could do that for 80 home games <laughs> for baseball. <laughs> you know, at least football, you, yeah, it's a very short season. But um, you know, anything can happen. We'll see. It'll be interesting to see how things play out. I guess from a hobby perspective, I know we're talking a lot of baseball, but like if you have more people watching, obviously that's a good thing for the hobby. Generally, you're hoping that some percentage of that audience will convert to being coming becoming card collectors but also i think i think you were talking about it chris about like the running game like having more excitement in the game that's not just about hitting home runs i mm-hmm. think that could translate into the hobby in that we're not just collecting home run hitters you know mm-hmm. right now it's just like if you don't hit home runs um the card's gonna have a cap in terms of value like aaron judge obviously blew up last year but like you know you don't see like 30 stolen bases is not that exciting right mm-hmm. but 50 or 60 stolen bases like oh okay now we're talking you know that like corbin carroll if he does that that was um, the guy that came to my right? mind right there yeah his rookie card like it's gonna pump his value a lot more than in another regular season where it's the same old rules and it's capped at 20 30 stolen bases right i, I was thinking the same thing where you know the running game you know might play a bigger factor in kind of like value of players at first it was like well you know batting average home runs you know all that is what you look look for but then it definitely will hit, hit the scale on the war level stealing sure. more bags being more active on on the base paths like doing more damage that way and i think that's what they're trying to do in general so it's it's uh i, I was thinking about that it would would the value of you know someone who steals more go up because the the war value and then would home run hitters in the past have more value because maybe you know the game changes where it's not as much you know long ball because if if people are just trying to win you know they're gonna realize that like speed speed does a lot you know the the pace of the game the speed of the game having fast runners so yeah it'll be definitely interesting to see kind of like how this changes the game and it will change the game it I, like I've, I have a feeling it's gonna it's it's definitely gonna speed up the game which which i think is going to be a lot more entertaining for the fans i'll just i'll tell you as a as a player i never minded pitching against the big power hitters that that's not what bothered me i hated those dynamic little players that would just fly on the base path you know the two guys that i remember the most were michael Bourne, who i know him, yeah. you know him very very well yeah and uh, joey gothright those two guys i hated pitching against them just because of speed. It wasn't had nothing to do with power. Mm. It was just pure speed. I did not yeah. want them on the base paths, right? So it's, you're you're working almost extra hard, so to speak, you know, when they're hitting to to, to avoid getting them on first base because they're looking to go. And I think if we can get guys like that back in the game and, and showing that that caliber of, of of that part of the game and, and the speed aspect of it and just stealing and running and, you know, going first to third or second or whatever it is, then that's exciting for fans. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one more thing before we go on to our next discussion, um, the ban on shifts, like at first um, I didn't like the ban because I'm a huge stats geek. I love playing with stats. I'm like, yeah, if uh, you know, Freddie Freeman hits, to the right side 90% of the time. Why not? Why not throw your third baseman to the shallow right? But um, but I think thinking about it a little bit more, the ban on shifts, I'm hoping that you're going to see some like really good defensive plays. Like this mm-hmm. is going to step up the, the defensive side of things. And I think that could also be you know part of the highlight reel on a daily basis. You know what I mean? And that might increase the excitement of the game. You know, like rather than getting... Uh, Freddie Freeman, I'm, I'm just using he's just in my mind. I'm just picking on him. But <laughs> rather than like getting him ground out from a shallow right to first base, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that works out. When was the shift uh, implemented? Like or when did teams, it's it's when Moneyball kind of came out and the whole, yeah. you know, analytical world uh, was kind of the forefront. I, I would say like mid 2000s, maybe. That's when Probably. teams really started. I feel like right. it was even later. Than it's that. wild. Well, like wrong, but... when when when, he's, when like you see it because we played, we coached the junior national team together, so we play, you know, minor league minor league teams sometimes down in like spring training and stuff, and you know they practice the shift, and I'm just sitting up there. It's like, man, like you bunt, like 
<laughs> it's just like it's there. It's that's a base but, hit. You know, but to that, you know, that's the point, right? Like, how exciting would that be? I know, but <laughs> that, that's what like, I'm saying. It's like it's a battle baseline, of yeah. playing right. the game and you know, capitalism. Kinda, you know <laughs> right. what I mean? <laughs> but hits are good. I mean, if you're talking about yeah. it for the fan experience. Unless you're a baseball purist like I, like I'm, I'm good with a big, a good old one nothing pitchers duel, but most fans aren't, right? They want to see mm. runs, and if you ban the shift, now you add, you know, more hits fall in or get yeah. through holes. Now you're adding more runs, so that's a way of increasing that excitement, fan experience, and and everything without doing things like the pitch clock, which I hate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll agree to disagree. There. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. Good talk. Now for our other discussion we have planned to talk about today is the big news from Fanatics in partnership with Major League Baseball. And that's all rookies playing in their first MLB game. I saw Jordan Walker actually wear one today when they played against the Jays. Um, there were, on their uniform, they have a special patch on the arm that says MLB debut. Then that patch will be taken off and inserted into a baseball card as a one of one, which can be found in a pack by one lucky collector. Um, you guys excited about that as much as I am? Of course. I love it. You know, we, we, we talked about this on a previous podcast, you know, where, you know, this is exactly Fanatics Alley. You know, I, I find absolutely nothing wrong with this and I want to see more of it where, you know, let's just say, you know, somebody hits home run number 500. It's like you, you could use memorabilia from that day and, you know, be able mm, to right. implement it in chases throughout cards where it's not rookie chasing only you know this is like this it's it's almost like what they're trying to do with tops now you know make a set that it's like wow remember this moment you know we created a card this is like on steroids right like fanatics is you know basically you know the capability that they have with all this memorabilia now to put in the chase you know as a sports card collector, I'm way more expi- excited about that because, um, you know, that changes the user experience big time. And, you know, we all love totally. the hobby. We all love ripping. And if, if it becomes a lot more, I guess, uh, worth it to rip, the ROI becomes worth it. I think it will bring people, you know, back into kind of like that space. I'm just excited For because sure. Joe's, uh, Young's going to be ripping all these uh, packs, and I'm going to pick up all the scraps that he doesn't want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually was, was watching. I saw that same thing. Jordan Walker he got his first hit, and the first thing I, I kind of looked mm-hmm. for because I knew about this, right, was that patch. And I saw it. I was like, wow, like that's going to be – it's like it's the gonna logo, be huge. Man. It's going to be huge, yeah. right? This going to yeah. be massive. You're going to, I mean, th- I think you're going to see, you know, a lot of money being thrown around for these patches. I, I'm hoping they don't look like a manufactured patch because those yeah. ones, I, I don't like the manufactured patch. Yeah. So those are kind of cheesy to me, but right. these ones will look really good. But then I started questioning when are we going to see some like uh, cross promotions or whatever uh, with branding and other companies? Like I was thinking like the, the Padres, they've got the Motorola patches on their jerseys, right? So when are we going to see like a fanatics mm. tops or whatever Motorola card, you know, out there <laughs> yeah. and, and see like one of one's Motorola or whatever. It's like, <laughs> it's like, a, and I, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if we do, if we see that uh, sooner rather than later, because if there's money to be made, somebody's going to to dive in with it. Right. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm with you guys. I'm pretty excited about it. Like, you know, um, you're saying, Chris, like, I don't know how much those are going to go for once they're actually in packs. Like, imagine an Anthony Volpe or Jackson Churio one of one MLB patch. That's thousands, right? It's going to be, yeah. I'll tell you what, it's not going to be in my eBay search. <laughs> I'll tell you guys. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's just a lo- it's just it's fun to look. Absolutely, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, do, do you guys expect to see anything like this in other sports? Like um, basketball could easily. Do I think this. Like, I think you need to. I think it, it yeah. becomes a standard of that user experience that we talked about. You can't, you know. I, I I think it works well in baseball, but yeah, other sports make sense. Like there's, I, I don't know about tennis though. We're gonna have to be creative there, but it's like <laughs> <laughs> you know, part of his polo or. You know, <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll get the little like Ralph Lauren uh, polo <laughs> yeah. symbol or whatever in a card or something. No, you, you could add, you could add a patch anywhere on his shirt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, going back to basketball, can you imagine like a Victor Wembanyama NBA yeah, yeah, debut for patch? Sure. Yeah, that'd be that's, sick. That's at least five figures there, right? So, 
Well, NBA well, does better than any sport. I think of marketing as players and everything, right? So you know they probably and, and have the, the, the way they branded the the logo man. Yeah. You know the way they branded the logo man. That would be a huge chase more than I think the MLB debut, because yeah. I think the rich history and now that you know Fanatics has kind of like that tops uh, tops Chrome basketball right. right or whatever however they're gonna do it i don't know uh but you know having having that true one of one logo man i think would be massive yeah agreed well opening day um i think some of the games already ended when we started recording this and um yeah if you're a jays fan like we all are that was a wild game that, that was went back and game. forth <laughs> yeah it's good start st louis is really good hours of beautiful <laughs> yeah, i was gonna say <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, I thought this was to speed up the game, but um, but yeah. I guess when the score's 10 to 9 with 30 plus combined hits. Yeah, perfect. You, yeah, yeah, you can't <laughs> complain. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's our Friday episode. Thanks again for all our listeners and subscribers tuning in. Uh, we'll have a regular full length episode on Tuesday. Chris, thanks again for joining us. And actually, you'll be back for our Tuesday episode. So, um, yeah, for people that uh, liked. Uh, what Chris brought to the show well you're in for a treat uh, on Tuesday Uh, we'll see you then bye hey thanks for listening to Cards to the Moon we'd really appreciate you subscribing to our podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts and you can also connect with each of us on Instagram at 5 card guys or you can follow Hyung at Integrity Sports Cards or John at Trade You at Recess you can also check us out at 5cardguys.com thanks again and hope to connect soon.